Many of you have been steadfast and you have labored and you have been patient and you have endured. Some of you have endured great trials and great trouble. But nevertheless, you're here this morning in the house of the Lord. And the Lord is going to bless you this day with that thing that is most needed. The Lord has seen your trouble. The Lord has seen how you have endured and how you have overcome and how you have not given in. Many of you under the sound of my voice this morning that are in this, in this place, you are a child of God. Your foot is on the rock. Your mind is made up. Your heart is fixed. You have been faithful and you have endured much. You have endured much. But there is one thing needed that you desperately need. And the Lord's going to minister that to you this morning in this place. In Ephesians 3 and verse number 13, it said, Faint not at my tribulations. In other words, don't be overcome just because I'm in trouble. You, you know what it is to be in trouble. But whenever you see leadership in trouble, don't let that affect you. Come on now. Hold on to God. Amen. Amen. Just hold on to God. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 13. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Which is your glory. Somebody say, that, that doesn't uh, compute to the way that I think. In other words, I, I don't understand how somebody else's trouble could benefit me. Well, some people have a hard time figuring out how Jesus' whipping heals us today. I am healed by his stripes. Come on, somebody. A lot of people can't understand how that his death brought me life. Come on, somebody. Uh, you know, I'm going to say something that, uh, that uh, you know, but you just really don't think about. Somebody else's death might be your blessing. Oh, you don't want them to die. But, but you, you want the blessing that's connected to it. Jesus had to die so I could live. And when he died, he left me a will. And the will is in effect. Paul told the church, don't worry about my trouble. My trouble is going to end up being your glory. Because Paul had a made up mind that no matter what kind of trouble he went through, he wasn't about to turn his back on God. And do we have some folks in here this morning with a made up mind? And with a fixed heart. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. My little bit of trouble is nothing in comparison to the glory that's coming. Can you say amen? amen? When Paul was writing to the Ephesians in chapter 3, verse 13, Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my trouble. Look at Revelation. Revelation 2 and 3. What did Jesus say about that church that was warned not to faint? Look, Jesus is talking to the Ephesian church. That Paul spoke to. The same thing that Paul spoke to the Ephesian church. Jesus said. And Jesus said over there in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 3. In other words, you have carried it. The old King James would say, and has borne. How many has ever felt like you've had to uh, carry a thing? How many's ever felt like that you've been yoked up? 
How many feel like that you've been carrying it all by yourself? Come on, somebody. How many knows that Jesus was carrying the cross by himself? And when he couldn't carry it anymore, God provided somebody to carry it the rest of the way. But the cross made it to the top of the hill. God saw to it that the cross made it to the top of the hill. And if you can't get to the top of the hill with what you're carrying, God will get it to the top of the hill. You might fall under it two or three times, but God will get it there. And you'll arrive at the same time it gets there. Can you say amen? God knows what some of you are carrying. It's not easy. It's heavy. Some of you, and thou hast borne and hast, and hast patience. Some of you, under the sound of my voice, you've been through so much. I know you're patient. Pastor's here encouraging you this morning. The Lord has seen your patience. What produces patience? Trouble. Trouble. How many can relate to me? How many's had any trouble? And you're still a believer. And you're still in church. How many has had their fair share of trouble? And then some. You know, I, I, I went to the cafeteria and I got in line and I only wanted one scoop. Gave me three scoops. <laughs> Sometimes trouble comes in bunches. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. How many's had their fair share of trouble? You have carried it. You've had trouble. You've got patience this morning. You wouldn't even be here if you didn't have a certain amount of patience. You would have thrown your hands up a long time ago and walked away. But there ain't no walking away in you. Ain't no turning in you. I know you've said to yourself at times, why do I push? Why do I push? There's something greater in you than's in, that's in the world. Look at verse 3, Revelation 2 and verse 3. You have carried it. You've had patience for my name's sake. You have labored. How many knows what it is to work and labor? I, I, I'm talking about labor. Some of you are working at your salvation. Let every man and woman work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm telling you folks, listen to me carefully as your pastor. I do good to work out my own. I can't work yours out. If we both went to the gym, I can't do your lifting. If we both go to the pool, I can't do your swimming. My Lord, if we both go to the altar, I can't do your praying. Well, I can pray for you. I can encourage you. I can encourage you at the gym. Come on now, lift it. Or I can encourage you at the swimming pool. Keep going. But I can't do your swimming. I can't do your lifting. I can't do your praying. Yeah. Only you can. Yeah. Somebody give the Lord a clap off yeah. Only you can overcome. Yeah. Only you can resist the devil. Yeah. Oh, how many hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The last sentence in verse number three. And hast not fainted. You have not fainted. Didn't Paul tell the Ephesian church, don't faint because of my trouble? I don't know why, but the Lord spoke this to my heart. I think I do. Because the Lord's revealing some stuff to me right now. Some of you are so connected to that loved one of yours. That wife and that husband and that boy and that girl. And if they had more trouble than what you could take care of, it would affect you. Mm. I wonder why the Lord spoke that to me. Some of you are not ready 
to lose. To, to, some of you are not ready for the passing of your wife or your husband. You would be so bent out of shape if something like that were to happen. You would be overcome. And you would mentally pass out. What does the Bible talk about when it said, don't faint? I'm not talking about a loss of blood to the brain to where you get dizzy and get unconscious. That's physical. I'm talking about when you look up the word faint, it means to lose courage or lose your spirit. You are so connected with some folks in your life that if they were taken out of your life, courage might go right out of you. And the spirit might go right out of you. Because you're so connected to that individual. How in the world can you go on in God when you're more connected to the arm of the flesh? This is strong. I don't have a weak word. My daughter's going to be speaking to you in just a little bit. But I have a strong word from the Lord. Fainting means to become weak. That's another, another def definition of the word faint. Paul said to the Ephesian church, don't faint because of my trouble. In other words, don't Get weak just because you see me in trouble. So what is it when you're so connected to certain family members and certain loved ones and you see them with, with so much trouble that you cave in and give in? Come on, somebody. Paul told the Ephesian church, don't think just because you know about my trouble. Stop looking at the leader. Stop looking at the pastor. Look at Jesus. Yeah. And the church listened to what the Apostle Paul said. And Jesus showed up in the second chapter of the book of Revelation, verse number three, and said, You have not fainted. Yeah. They listened to the preacher. They did not they allow themselves to be overcome or become weak. Mmm. One definition of the word faint, and I can see it on some of your faces. I don't need discernment. I can pick up on it. To faint means to lose the brightness that's in the face. Yes. To faint means to lose your smile. To lose your shine. To lose the sparkle in the eye. The enemy wants to take the sparkle out of your eye. Come on now. He wants to take your smile away. He wants to take your brightness away. How many knows that no matter how much trouble you're having personally in your own home, and you've got loved ones that are into trouble up to here, it doesn't have to take your smile. It doesn't have to take the light out of your eye. Is God first? Is God first? Is he more important than that husband? Is he more important than that wife? That daughter, that son? Who is God in your life? Is God more important than your pastor? He better be. Somebody better give the Lord a clap offering. If you're coming to church for the pastor's sake, you're as weak as water. You won't make it. Why, well, you won't make it 10 minutes after the service is over. I wouldn't even want to go to lunch with you. Mm, 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 mm. God is jealous. Yes. Paul said, don't faint because of my trouble. And Jesus said over there to the Ephesian church, you have not fainted. But 
you lost something. You lost your first love. You lost your first love. Oh, you have patience. Oh, you know how to work. Oh, you know how to endure. Oh, you haven't fainted. You still got a sparkle in your eye. But inside, Jesus knows us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Jesus knows my heart. And he knows my labor, my patience. He knows I haven't given up. But is my heart in love with God? Did you know you can get so busy working for the Lord and enduring for the Lord and carrying for the Lord and keeping yourself from being overcome in the Lord that if you're not real careful, you can fall out of love? And the best thing about a believer is the one that's still in love with Jesus, whose heart is in love with the Lord. Don't we serve a good God? Mary, come to the pulpit. The Lord showed me that I need to do something when you're finished speaking. And I know normally you're not long-winded. But no matter what it is, long or short, you give it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God blows my mind. My daughter says that to me a lot when she's getting ready to tell me something. She says, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. And it makes me nervous <laughs> when she says that. But God blows my mind. This, I had like five pages of notes. One, two, three, four, five pages of notes of something that I was going to preach this morning. And I'm standing in the bathroom getting ready for church. And sickness hit my house. My son was vomiting. My daughter was face was blood red, burning up with fever. My husband began to vomit. I got so sick. I said, God, I can't push. I've been shaking all morning and sick. And I'm standing there in the bathroom holding on to the sink. And I thought, oh, that message is just little. It'd be all right. Dad will have something. I'm just going to stay home. And my mirror turned from a mirror to a vision. And the Holy Ghost showed me a pant leg. And I saw a tick on the pant leg. And it crawled up inside the pant leg. And then it climbed across a little hair on the leg and got onto the skin. And the Holy Ghost said, sometimes you're carrying things that you're not supposed to be carrying. And you don't feel the effect of it at first. But this tick was carrying a disease that began to affect the body. Sometimes we're carrying things, church. We're carrying things from people that we have put up on a platform. We think they're up here and they decide to strap their burden onto us and we carry it and they're not lifting a finger to carry it themselves. And it's affecting the body. Hallelujah. And I saw this sickness begin to cause blackness come onto this leg. And I said, Jesus, what are we going to do about that? And he said, it, it would have been better to be stung by a bee or a wasp. Because you can hear them coming. You hear that little buzz and you know what's coming. You're either going to be smart and move or be stupid and swat it and end up with a sting. But this tick that climbs up on the inside of your pant leg, deceivingly, you don't hear it, you don't feel it, brings sickness into the body. And God struck a match and he burnt the tick off of the leg. Hallelujah. And I said, oh God. And he said, it would have been better to be stung by a wasp or by a bee because you would have seen it coming and the pain would have been expected. But now there's gonna be some pain that's coming when I have to take the match and touch the tick because it's gonna affect the body. Have you ever burned a tick off yourself? If you get your skin, mm, it affects your body too. You're gonna to feel some pain. And I said, God, I don't like that. I don't wanna feel pain just because something was put on me that I wasn't supposed to be carrying. But he's gonna pull the pant leg up. 
and he's going to reveal what has been put on you. And he's going to reveal that sickness. And it might be a little bit painful for you to lay it off because you've been putting people up here and they've been laying their burden on you. And I went to this scripture. I was still so sick. I'm feeling good right now. Thank you, Jesus. I was sick when I came in the door. I asked that brother to pray for me. All the way to church, I kept on saying in my mind, okay, if you start to pass out, just drive into somebody's yard. I'm not kidding. That's how sick I was in my body. And I knew, and my eyes kept trying to close on me. My husband looked at me and said, what are you doing getting ready to go to church? You're shaking, you're sick, you got no color in your face. What are you doing? I said, you must not know me very well. The enemy don't like what God has showed me in my mirror this morning, but the church is going to hear it. And it might hurt a little bit of people when they get that tick burn off of them. And it might hurt you a little bit when it has to be plucked from your flesh. And it might be somebody that you've been holding at high esteem, but God's going to have to pluck them off and remove the burden that they laid on you because it ain't yours to carry. Hallelujah. It's not yours to carry. So you're going to have to lay it down. It's going to have to be about you and Jesus. Just you and Jesus. One of the greatest commandments was to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Hallelujah. Put that first. You start... It's like the pastor was saying, you got to stop putting people up here. Don't look at your pastor. Don't look at the ministry. Don't look at what, what the minister's wearing in the church. You better not get out of your car and say, ooh, look what they got on. Oh, that's right. Hallelujah. You better stop holding the ministry in a place that you're not supposed to hold them. Because we're just vessels of God. If you look at me and you don't see Jesus, if you look at me and you see me, your vision's wrong. Your vision's off. And I said, oh, God, I said, I don't want to say something about the head of the church. And he gave me this scripture, and I started to read this, and I about lost it. And I thought, this ain't what I'm supposed to preach. And then you got up, and Jesus confirmed it. Then spake Jesus unto the multitude, it's Matthew chapter 23, and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Listen to this verse right here. This is what blew my mind. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Why are you going to carry something? They're going to lay on you, but they won't lift a finger. Come on. He's going to pull the pant leg up this morning. He's going to strike the match. He's going to burn the tick off. But there's going to be some pain, Brother Moore, and that's the part. That makes me sick and makes me sad, and the enemy didn't want me to come and tell you about it this morning. It's not going to be all peaches and cream. It might hurt a little bit. It hurts when somebody in our life passes, especially somebody that we hold in high esteem. It hurt me when Grandma died because I knew what kind of a prayer warrior she was. But that just meant that I had to take up being a prayer warrior. Yeah. Hallelujah. You better shake yourself of putting somebody else up here and God off to the side. That's what it is right there. Where is God in your life? Where is he? On all the levels that you put things, your job, your house, your family. Hey, my heart and my mind wanted to stay home and hold my son's hand while he was vomiting this morning. My heart wanted to stay home and make sure that my daughter's fever was going to break. My heart wanted to stay there, lay hands on my husband and pray with him all day because he's ill in his body. But my spirit said, get yourself to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because who is first? God has to be first in our lives. And I know with every fiber of my being that he is taking care of my family right now. Hallelujah. God's got my back. Woo! He told me that this morning. And I sat there and I was a little heavy when I came in. And, and when the Lord told me to raise my hands and praise him, 
I didn't sit very long. Hallelujah. Because you've got to be obedient to God, church. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Who cares how the world judges me? The world might say, well, she should have been home taking care of her family. But guess what? God is number one in my life. And he had a message to tell you this morning. And he is pulling the pant leg up. And he's revealing the source that is putting a sickness into your spiritual body. And he's going to burn it off. And you might be affected by it, but you're going to be better for it. Because if that tick stays on you, it's going to engorge itself, sucking the life out of you. Yeah. And this morning, God is going to burn it off. And it's not going to suck the life out of you anymore. Your blood will be purified if you will get your heart and your mind back where it belongs. Or loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. Not just a little bit, church. Every ounce of you better be putting the Lord first. Hallelujah, brother. More come back to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I came to the church at 8 o'clock this morning to try to take care of some business. And I didn't come to church in a suit. I came to church in work clothes. One lady said to me when she came to the church, because I was working, I'm not used to seeing you in jeans. I said, well, I didn't come to preach that early. Came to work. And uh, made sure the heat was on and the doors were open and went back home and changed for church. Oh, I could have stayed in jeans. I love them. Amen. Amen. I love my jeans. They're comfortable. Amen. I got more jeans than you can shake a stick at me. (laughs) Amen. I got more suits than I can wear. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. So when I came and I was praying and I was seeking the Lord and I didn't know who was coming today, I seen that young man pull up in the driveway Rod, it's good to see you. The Lord spoke to me. And I'm going to tell you exactly what the Lord spoke to me. He said, this morning, you better give them a chance. You're just the pastor. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, you better give my people a chance to come to the altar so that I can deposit back in their heart first love. He said, they've been faithful. They have carried much. They have patience. Oh, they have pushed when they don't feel like pushing. They've not denied my name. And all of a sudden, when I was praying, tears come to my eyes and my heart swelled up. And I felt like I did that hour when Jesus first came in my heart. And he said, that's what I want my people to feel. And I went, oh, that makes it all worthwhile. The Lord spoke to me. He said, what good is it if you've got patience and you know how to endure and you know how to push and with a heart that's not full of love? And I started singing. And I know I asked Sister Brenda to lead in worship. I like it when she leads. I like it when Mary leads or Amy leads. Thy loving kindness is better than life. I'd like for you to play that for me. Thy loving kindness is better than life. What the Lord's going to do this morning around this altar is let you feel his kindness toward you and his love toward you. You're going to feel wanted and worth, valuable again. You're going to feel loved. How many of you would like to feel God's love in your heart again? Amen. You, you've got all the other. Amen. But we've kept ourselves from fainting. But what I really need is my first love. I want to be in love with Jesus. How many can relate to what I'm saying? Oh, my. Somebody give the Lord a clap off right Oh my, not only does the Lord have your back and he's taking care of your home situation, God's taking care of your home situation. 
God's going to take care of this young man. He's already put a hedge around about him. The enemy's not going to take advantage of his weak mind. And the Lord's going to restore unto him his right thinking. And the devil's not going to be able to walk over this young man anymore. Some of you that are under the sound of my voice, the Lord has just spoken to my heart. He's got your back just the same way he's got Mary's back. God has already rebuked the enemy and bound the enemy off of you. Some of you are going to experience healing, deliverance, freedom. My Lord, you're going to fall in love all over again. Mm. Feels good in here. I think God found the tick. I think the Holy Ghost is the fire. Amen. I don't care if God uses a pair of pliers. If he has to use a hot match to back him out. One time I put oil on a tick and watched it back out. Watched it back out. What is oil but the Holy Ghost? An old timer told me, he said, you got any, got any baby oil? And I said, yeah. And I went and got the baby oil and they said, hey, the tick ain't all the way in. It's, it's just his little mouth. He's only halfway in. Put, put the baby oil on it. And I said, okay. And I got a little baby oil and I, I got the tick with the baby oil and it backed out so fast. I thought, take that. Amen. How many would like to see the tick with so much oil on him he can't bite? You know what? Them old ticks, when you get the oil all in their mouth, ooh, they don't want to bite. <laughs> we need the Holy Ghost and oil. Oh, you may be seated for a moment. Brother John, if you'll come. Brother Riggs, praise the Lord. Brother Butch, if you'll come forward. A special offering to the Lord as you hold the baskets and pastor gets ready to bless it this morning my Lord it's so strange Mary you talked about that vision mother and I was watching television and they say this particular season they were warning the people they showed a tick that was so little what what disease does, does it call Lyme Lyme and it showed this little boy on television with two circles because that tick got him and uh, you know what I am so glad that God is healing the body of Christ yes, Father the tithe is faithful always is the offerings are good you've blessed the right basket and the left basket and sometimes Lord you multiply it before I get home and for this I say thank you Thank you, Lord. You told me you had a building for us. And we've been in this building for 17 months. Thou art faithful. Thou art faithful. Thank you for the word. Thank you most of all for your spirit. In Jesus' name, bless those that gave by faith. Amen. 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 God is so good. God is so good. Every Wednesday night, all... Around 7, people come earlier. They come at 5.30 and 6, and we eat supper together. And it's just uh, a potluck. But to me, it tastes better than luck. <laughs> Amen. Some of the stuff that's coming, I'm telling you, you couldn't find at a nice restaurant. It's been really good. So if you'd like to come early on Wednesday, you would enjoy the Bible study. Missy, we're so glad you're here. Amen. You know, I really... It was encouraging seeing your husband in the house of the Lord. Would you say a word for the Lord this morning, Missy? We're glad you're here. I just thank God that I'm here. I'm here to be here. I just thank God for everything. He's done me so much. And yes. I thank God that my husband, he's touched my husband's heart. He's been in the grave this week. And he was in bed like making sure. Yes, so amen. He's been in your prayers, but God has been so good to us. You know, Missy, you're one of the ones who put God first. Uh, you could have stayed home. You know, you could have held their hand by the Lord. And you know, you could have stayed home, tried to work it out. But you put God first. Ron, it's so good to see you. I'm glad you're here today. Uh, would you, by faith, say a word for the Lord? Uh, you don't have to stand if you don't want to, but just say a word for the Lord. I have no doubt that he's alive and he's real. Amen. Yes. 
Yes. Thank you, Lord. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Full armor of God. Amen. The young man is speaking from experience this morning. When he got out of his vehicle, I could see the sadness. But because you came to the altar, one of the first, and because you obeyed and stood, when you heard the Lord touched you, the Holy Ghost come on you. That wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been here. But once the interpretation came and you moved, you heard it, you believed, that's when the Lord touched you in your body. He's going to take care of your whole family. They're healed. Amen. Amen. Mom and I, uh, Rhonda Gale bought uh, your oldest son, your only son, a suit. And it's in the car. And if it don't fit him, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because I put the jacket on, I like it. But it seemed like it's got a little room up here. And you know, that's good for Austin. Yeah. yeah. But as soon as you heard, like he testified, you moved. You were one of the first to make a move and come to the altar. And because you came to the Lord's altar, the Lord spoke to my heart. You saw the Lord first. You're not trying to fix what you can't fix. God's going to fix it. If you believe, you believe what I'm saying. You've known me a long time. You don't have to fix it. You'll know what to do. God has healed your family. The Lord has touched your grandson. Put a hedge around him. The enemy's not going to take advantage of his weak mind. And the Lord is going to honor your prayer. You felt the Holy Ghost. God is healing his thoughts. Amen. And he'll never be taken advantage of again. You've been concerned about that, haven't you? That somebody would take advantage of him. You don't have... You don't need to lose sleep or worry about that ever again. The Lord showed me that just as plain as can be. There's some things that's been concerning you, Brother Tex. And if you could, you would fix them. But they're beyond you. And But you know a man who can. You know a man who can. And you're looking to him today. Brother Tex, every time you make your way to the house of the Lord, I, I'm, I'm prophesying right now. There is a brightness that's going to come to you that the enemy will not be able to put out. Your face will glow with the light of God. Regardless of what others do, it will shine bright. There were some others that made their way to the altar. The Lord heard your prayer. Our daughter prayed with you. We're so glad you came to the altar and called on the name of the Lord. How many are glad you prayed? Amen. You know, each and every one of you. The altar was open for every one of you. Every one of you. I will say this, the Lord loves you. I felt like maybe the Lord, not maybe, the Lord was tugging at some hearts during the service. He usually does when the spirit's moving like that. He was tugging at some hearts. And uh, thank God you have a heart he can tug at. And thank God you're not unreachable. God can reach you when nobody else can. Hallelujah. Oh, that was a good message. I appreciate that. Amen. Didn't mean to get in front of you. I didn't know if I was going to get in front of you or behind. Amen. I was trying to figure it out, but when you started rejoicing, I thought, oh, why not? I just, I just start first and let Mary <laughs> come on up. Amen. Isn't God good, Brother Bill? Oh, my. Roy, you feel better? Oh, man. You know, the Spirit came on you. The Spirit come on you real strong. Uh, real strong. God's going to help you. And isn't he getting better and better? I just thank God for that. Thank the Lord. Good to see you in the house of the Lord, Neil. 
every one of you. Amen. That's your nephew, isn't it? He drove a long way to be here. Mary, do you know he drove, I think, all the way from Zanesville? Yeah. yeah. Am I right on that? I told him I wish he'd move real close to the church because he's a blessing to me, you know, and uh, every one of you is a blessing. Some of you just live down the road. Oh, I'm so thankful that the Lord is going to give us that mighty revival. Yes. I heard Thank that you, in the tongue. I heard it. Amen. We've got a revival coming bigger than any man, bigger than any woman. Why will you walk in? God will be do, doing the conducting. Yes. Amen. 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 And I'm just going to enjoy it. Amen. I, I, his revival. His revival. Thank Good God, Jesus. isn't he? Thank you, Amen. I appreciate the Lord. You, Lord. Next Sunday, I've asked for uh, Sister Adele Gray. Uh, last Sunday, we were at lunch together. I said, Sister Adele... I would like for you to come to Grace Fellowship on the last Sunday of the month of April. And I would like for you and your wife to advertise it for me real well. You know how to do it on computer. Will you help me? Sister Adele said, Pastor Moore, I never thought that I would come back to Mount Vernon. The Lord's opened doors for me. I've moved. I'm ministering in other places. She said, but for you, I will come. I said, Sister Adele, I would like for you to minister in your gift. I'm not asking you to come and preach. Uh, Grace Fellowship has a preacher. Amen. 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 I, I can preach. Amen. I, I said, they get a fair amount of that. And this morning you received Ephesians and Revelation. I just gave you a little bit on your plate, but it was good. I said, Sister Adele, I do not feel to ask you to come to preach. And I said, you can. She said, Pastor Moore, your sermon on faith has stirred me up. She said, I want to preach about now faith, through faith, and by faith. She said, I did everything in my power to keep my seat because I was getting ready to run out of my seat and give you a high five. I said, I haven't had too many high fives in the pulpit. She said, I was high fiving you right back there. She said, that was a sermon. And she said, I drove all the way to hear that sermon. She said, Pastor Moore, for you, on the 29th, and she said, not just for you, but for the Lord. I said, now we're talking. She said, I will pray and I will come on the 29th of April. Oh, I hope and pray we don't have a blizzard. Because there's a blizzard coming. I hope and pray it don't land on Ohio. We heard Pennsylvania's going to get it tomorrow in West Virginia. A big one. They are calling it the late April blizzard. And it's aimed for Ohio. And I've already prayed. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to call the snow plow. <laughs> Amen. Don't want to mess up the gravel. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But on the 29th of April, evangelist prophetess Adele Gray will come and minister in the gift. And Mary, Lord willing, uh, you will help us praise the Lord. And you'll be ready. We'll be pray She likes the way we praise the Lord. Sister Adele told me, she said, Pastor Moore, I go to a lot of places. But every time I come into a place where you have been ministering, I feel like I've walked into the Holy of Holies. Amen. And it's so easy for me to minister. I already feel the presence of the Lord. She said, I've been to many uh, uh, churches in Mount Vernon and, and around. And uh, I don't feel the atmosphere that I need to feel. And she said, I'm looking forward to the 29th. 
Mary, isn't that wonderful? I thank the Lord that he showed you the vision this morning and that you pressed beyond sickness. You battled that often. But God's got your back. Amen. And you're healed this morning. Amen. Rhonda, I believe God's going to bless you in your heart and allow you to feel what you felt when you first got saved. And I believe that you prayed for her this morning. 